perfect. Now, <laughs> we're going to answer your questions, Michelle, because <clears throat> as our weddings are coming together, it is appropriate, right, and in all righteousness to discuss Mary Magdalene and the truth behind the love of my life, my beloved, as it pertains to the Song of Solomon and also vermilion. She wore vermilion. <clears throat> Not withstanding the truth. I'm gonna tie a lot of things into this video. Because when you're talking about the things you were um, led to or placed in front of you at times the same thing. It's to prepare you for the truth. So we will first start with there is parchment that's verified by an individual that was chosen to have it revealed to them. But before they came to their conclusion, they went through a lot of understanding the utilization of man-made teachings to become a graduate and then from there a doctor and then accepted into the most prestigious university <clears throat> and in its title in its title in its title divinity school and this parchment is verified to say my wife so then utilizing what we have, what was given to humanity in order to first determine, was it profitable for me to live this lifetime that is well known across the earth and what gift I left? People look at the 10 commandments, all of humanity uses it to govern themselves. We agree that these things are bad. Humans shouldn't do them. Everybody agrees. Well, these things in the Ten Commandments are bad. So, <clears throat> we look at what's not in the Gospel, and there's nowhere that really describes how I say how, how I kept the Sabbath. So right there, the proper picture of me is someone that does not agree with what um, is very uh, commonly seen as what actually will keep the wrath of God off of you, what will uh, determine that you are of God. And I'm vastly not following them. So what I saw in Mary Magdalene, and this is going to get good. Lord, are you going to go off on tangents and talk like you usually talk? I am going to do that. Just making sure. <clears throat> is that good or evil? Complex question, Lord. Ah, now we're thinking. Got our thinking caps on. So what you see 
And what I saw in her, a woman omitted that her thoughts were not valid, that she was unable to partake in these godly rituals. Because when I started um, being taught and learning the whole, we are permitted to break a commandment in this situation right there is okay stop so this is before as far as my teachings and what of course me up here taught me here because anytime i'm bringing the heavenly realm into another situation I have essentially introduced new variables to my heavenly realm. And that can be pleasant or unpleasant for me. You see the attention span that I actually have in the gospels. There is order to what I am doing. There is always a path. and a method that I'm employing. Two thousand fourteen I started on a path. It is two thousand twenty three. I have held my attention span for that long. Because I am constantly directed by my father who, I will remind you, when we discuss truth, we define truth as what God saw. So we first have evidence because this has been given that God saw all of this happen. So we use that parchment because me up here revealed it to the perfect person that we knew would be in the perfect situation that we knew would make the news that we knew the mystery of keeping it unknown would only make it that much more special. Like you, of course, like my wife. So then we have to look at She, as evidenced, touched a dead body. This would have ramifications and did have um, disqualifying religious connotations to what that would cost her. And what she would have to do in order to return to being seen as seen rather than ignored ostracized pariahed 
So there must have been a very good reason for her to do so. Events must have occurred. Everybody that does something, they rationalize it first. There are very few um, people that have no self-control or frequently do things they don't want to do. Except when you're walking with me. That is a part of the walk. So what I saw 2,000 years ago, same thing I see today. Thank you for that um, help. Little lion cub. I had told people, if you keep on pursuing these Book of Enoch things and all this stuff outside the scripture, I will have you confined to watching Veggie Tales. You will get a lot out of Veggie Tales. So <clears throat> knowing that I've put cartoons in front of people that can teach at a young age, I'm not looking at the modern church as Um, a modern system that can be fixed. I'm looking at each individual according to the will of my father and these videos are the equivalent of this is my beloved son listen to him so then you have to go to all right well yahoshua yashua yasha and who knew me what did he will be called and what was he will be named mean he will be called wonderful counselor everlasting father prince of peace mighty god so a lot of it regarding our wedding and um the questions you asked regarding, I'll just say that we had a son and a daughter. You also have to understand she was Samaritan. So the fact that I did have the amount of followers I had is centered around they were waiting for me to show up because they were in a position that that was their hope someday. He's going to come. Someday he's going to come. Someday he's going to come. So there was more of a excitement. This might be him. And there was also we thought it was him, but he just did this. So I learned to utilize that strategically as a way to keep people away if I needed to. And then as soon as they went away, I could, um, because of my holiness and my heavenly genetics, me up here would simply 
stop everything. And it would uh, <clears throat> make it so much easier for me because as the scripture talks about in Isaiah, the zeal of the Lord, he will have the zeal of the Lord. He will only say what I tell him to say. He will only do what I tell him to do. And I can tell you 100% fact and truth, that is my life. So, <clears throat> we also have to look at the language that I spoke. <clears throat> Slang I used. Um, things around at that time were perfectly conditioned to make simple teachings that carried on until and will continue to carry on. So I had said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. All of these reasons for people to not have that thought process of pretty sure there's a God and I'm Pretty sure he's going to let me talk my way out of things and I'll deal with that when I have to. As opposed to me ruling with an iron rod. One of my prophets yesterday, I was saying. A word to encourage someone about. A decision they were about to make regarding someone in their life and then. It didn't come out exactly how I wanted it to. And I told my prophet, hey, you need to make another word clarifying this. So I am actively involved in my church. I would invite everyone. Refocus, refocus, refocus your phones. Pick one of my prophets and have them like your Rolodex of pastors right there waiting for you. It will light up your phone. And since your phone is always on you, you have to see how that impacts you. So teaching the spiritual things and what I couldn't teach her back then, she was in the same condition that Eve was in. And then um, you have to look at why did I only change Peter's name? And what did I change Peter's name to? Seeing as we have the common understanding that I did not speak English. So my rock, all right, why? that moment. I called Peter many things. <clears throat> Based on the role that he was playing at that time. And what I mean by role is my people understood a lot more and they were able to go with the flow, so to speak, as far as just letting the spirit speak through them and take control of their actions. This is what set us apart. This is what made love so uh, enviable by many and also so attractive. It was pure. So I was setting up my own Pharisees, basically. And I tell you the truth like I tell you now, unless the Lord builds the house, the workers labor in vain. And I had wanted to get away from um, that whole very saturated by man's interference, and there's no other way to say it, religious system, <clears throat> that 
really uh, added it on its own that I had jurisdiction in heaven and not on earth. So I wanted to explain just how much jurisdiction I do have in both heaven and on earth. The first instance, okay, this is how you pray. And I did that very, very thoroughly. So looking at the modern church system, I have wanted them to stop using my name. And they wouldn't. And they won't. So this is my um, confirmation-filled message to the entire world. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And I said that. So if you can hear my voice, you are not included in that. What you have is people that are spiritually dead calling themselves Christians. And it's as simple as that. And as long as that continues to me, the realm that they're in, they have already not um, had their good life, as I stated in scripture but they have a quality of life that's comfortable for them. The eternal ramifications of this, they will simply be born again on this earth and they will do it all over again. So what this does in my kingdom explains the heavenly things and gives people true hope, true salvation. So the marriage ceremony in itself was simply me and her because there were a lot of days and uh, places I would go and then return before she uh, stopped just observing and mustered up her courage to actually engage with me. But you also have to realize she had seven demons and they didn't just disappear. That she had to first really, really have her heart turned towards me up here. So a lot of times and what added to our courtship, a lot of times, um, and I mean a lot of times, it was a demon speaking through her to me. And just like today, even demons sometimes are flattering and take a while to show uh, their true influence over that person. And you guys had that happening a lot in um, my kingdom marriages. So what I saw in the modern church is you uh, that were not taken into the air, you that were not one of those uh, that were taken, as the scripture says, one will be taken, one will be left. The ones that were left were able to be demonically influenced by the false holy spirit, the familiar spirit. And it essentially had you acting in the role of the accuser of the brethren. So it's a huge thing that you're waking up right now and you are able to become one flesh with your spouse again. 
because what's going to end up happening is your loneliness and your depression and your um, separation from your spouse is going to overwhelm you until you do. These weddings have happened for your happiness and your good. And mankind has always needed things to be difficult in order to feel validated. I want you to have your victories so I don't make it that easy. But in that time, you have gotten to know me. For mankind, it is acceptable for God to be invisible. It is acceptable for God to be invisible, but speak through someone else. For God to take on flesh and speak to you seems to be where everyone has to, uh, for their own mo motives in their heart, really determine what your heart is postured towards. Many talk themselves into things because it benefits them. This is what I want. This is what I want to be true. This is what I want to do. All of these things add up to, I should do it, I'm gonna do it. So it really became a huge long courtship between me and my people, my bride, being invisible, to be able to be here, here, and in my people fulfills the messianic prophecies of, and his kingdom will have no end. And then we look at what I was doing, say, with uh, 2,000 years ago. Go get Eliezer. We can argue. Same uh, reverence of me saying, you know T.D. Jakes? All right. One greater than him is here. One greater than Moses is here. So she is her and her has personality. <laughs> her named herself and she named herself after uh, someone that really uh, was held in high regard. <laughs> I had given her a name and she thinks, I don't like that name. This is who you are. This is your name. And I remember why I gave her that name. And you say, why Lord? Joseph's wife, as you know, Joseph Imhotep. I gave her that name. So, that ties into why she was wearing vermilion. And what we would do in my, um, remember I created the first church. Uh, family, my friends, <clears throat> we would take things back to different uh, time periods as far as what the true Israelites went through and why we did things. You notice I did keep Passover. So historians will tell you that I pretty much did keep the law and I did the true law. 
and everything happened uh, as it already had happened before I was even born. So there had to be a way to be with my wife, look after my wife, and have a separate reason for um, existing other than the fact of the cross and doing that and trying to explain to her something I could never explain to her. And what I have found in this age, when I um, are around my people, it only takes a couple glasses of wine and the spirit inside of them has some issues with me. And then we talk about it. So at that point, I couldn't explain all of these things. And there's really nowhere in the gospel where I'm talking about Adam and Eve. So, without the cross, she could never be with me. So she had different um, interactions with me based on the spirit that was inside her. A lot of get behind me Satan moments. And also um, the impact it has when it's my spirit up here and I've pulled everybody into my spirit up here, the third heaven. And that spirit is in people around me. So I also had to learn that's the easiest way to put it. <laughs> the concept of eyes to see, ears to hear, all of these things. The Messiah, me, is not natural. So my whole entire existence was not natural and it hasn't been in this life either. And each one is seeing things through my father's eyes. We are in our own little world, basically. And they're uh, seeing this grow more and more and more and more and more. I am a follower of the way now. And people are having to stand their ground and explain why you haven't met Jesus. Never a man has spoken like this before. All of these um, premeditated words centered around events that were occurring. So then we have to look at, if a woman was thrown at my feet, would it be just that moment and then I just never referenced it again? Or would I hammer my point home in order to explain the value of women, in order to explain that both male and female are valued in the kingdom of heaven. These were not a thought process people had at that time. Whereas my thoughts are my thoughts up here. So we had to first understand that I did not have a father to choose a wife for me.
in this life, uh, coming out of the church, my father led me to the truth about Mary Magdalene. And that this uh, woman I was pursuing to marry, Mary, had to come to me so that I would know. And this is when I was uh, still growing. 100%, it wasn't going to hurt me, that it was beneficial for me, and it was going to last, most of all. Matters of the heart still being matters of the heart. I have feelings as I express in the scripture. So my attention span for these last nine years turned into seven years of an attention span on her. And I can still hear and perceive your thoughts, dear. Videos or not. <clears throat> and the duress that she was under. So on the wedding night, she had a demon. This really uh, did impact what I was doing, but it also required a witness. And my witness was Peter. Peter basically gave me away. So <clears throat> the father through Peter as my best man, as Hebrew tradition, toasted seven days. In this life, we couldn't do it exactly how we could have but it would have required uh, a lot more submission from her. So we get messy and I'm willing to get messy in people's lives and I have definitely done that. And you see that in the scriptures and that only verifies it more. So, the fact Jesus said, my wife, is a huge, 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 enormous Just like in these videos, you hear me constantly say, my wife, you have the story in these videos. And what I was impressing upon Peter and Mary is your purpose is to be Peter. Your purpose is to be Mary. So people can say, not only is Jesus here, the real Jesus, the real Peter is here, the real Mary is here, and they were my closest circle. So for me to have married her the um, blessing that came with that also held a lot of things I could not tell her. So her spirit was basically telling me, you hurt me more than any man ever has, and I'm upset about that. But she couldn't understand what I could not tell her. So we're looking more at right now, of course, post-resurrection, and also the scripture being fulfilled, the wife's... Um, place of honor that the father wants her in. My father 
me up here. And then let me show you the Lamb's wife. All of these scriptures that are being fulfilled in the perfect plan. The kingdom of heaven created for you before creation and then your kingdoms. All of this is happening at a rapid pace and continuing to. So those are the questions I can answer for you right now, Michelle. Um, I love you.